In this video, we're going over the Math 8 Practice DOD Calculator Active for problem 16 through 20. Okay, the first problem says, suppose that a scientist estimates that every square mile of the ocean contains an average of 4.6 times 10 to the fourth pieces of trash. The area of the Earth's surface that is covered by the ocean is approximately 1.2 times 10 to the eighth square mile. Using the estimate, how many pieces of trash are in the Earth's ocean? So I know I'm working with scientific notation. Um, sometimes when I have problems like this, I like to change the numbers and make them smaller or easier to say so I can kind of get a better idea of what's happening. So since I know that this is 10 to the 4th and this is 10 to the 8th, this number is smaller. So I'm going to change this number just for right now to 5. And this one's bigger, so I'm going to change this one to 100. And okay. so I'm going to read it again. So the scientists suppose that every square mile of the ocean, let me go ahead and just draw me a little picture. Okay. We know the ocean's not square, but just for this problem, let's just pretend this is the ocean. Okay. And that every one square mile, okay, it says that every square mile, so if you made it into a bunch of squares, okay, these are obviously not equal. So each square mile has, instead of that scientific notation number, I'm going to put five pieces of trash. Okay. Every square mile has five pieces of trash. The next thing it says is that the ocean has about how many square miles total? 100. Well, I'm not going to draw 5 100 times, okay, because you seem to be going to keep going. So if I wanted to estimate the total number of trash, if each square mile has 5 and there's 100 total square miles, well, that's 5 times 100. That would be 500 pieces of trash, okay? So what did I do there? I multiplied. Well, now that I know what operation to use, I'm going to go back and use the real numbers. So I need to say 4.6 times 10 to the fourth times oops, 5. times 1.2 times 10 to the eighth. Well, I can do this in my calculator because it's calculator active. So I'm literally going to put all this in parentheses times all this in parentheses. And when you do that, you get 5.52 times 10 to the 12. Now remember, if you get um, 5.52 e to the 12th, e is the way the calculator writes times 10. And whatever comes after it is your exponent, which means that my answer is a. Okay, for question two, it says, on Monday, on Monday, Mr. James made an eight-hour trip to his mother's house in his car. The graph below shows the distance he traveled at different times. On Tuesday, he drove home. His speed on Tuesday, Tuesday was five miles per hour faster, five miles per hour faster on Tuesday than the trip on Monday. Which equation would model the distance that Mr. James, Mr. James has traveled in his return trip after two hours? Okay, so how about the travel on Tuesday? So on this is the graph for Monday because it says the graph below shows the distance he traveled on Monday. Well, I can realize that if I'm going through a corner, he's traveling 50 miles in one hour or 50 miles per hour. Down here, it said that on Tuesday he was 5 miles an hour faster than Monday. So if I take 50 and I add 5, that makes it 55. So the answer to 17 is C. Okay, for 18, it said um, the value of x. So basically, they're asking you to solve for x. So I need to get x by itself. I'm going to rewrite this down here. So I've got negative 4x minus 2 over 3 equals negative 6. The first thing I need to do is get rid of this negative 3. If it's being divided, the opposite is multiplication. So when I multiply, this cancels, and I bring down the numerator. Negative 6 times 3 is negative 18. Now I need to get x by itself. I want this 2 to go away. It's negative, so I'm going to add 2 to both sides. That gives me negative 16. I want to get x by itself. It's being multiplied to negative 4, so I divide both sides by negative 4. And x is positive 4, which is d. 
Okay, for 18, this one, sorry, 19, this one's a little bit trickier. It says a company charges $211.25 for five trees and 15 shrubs. The company charges $15.25, sorry, $15.25 more for a tree than a shrub. Company charges $15.25 more for a tree than a shrub. That means the trees are more expensive than the shrubs by $15.25. How much does each shrub cost? Okay, there's two different ways that you can do this. The first thing I'm going to work out is um, the algebra one way or math one using systems way to solve it. And then on this section is where I'll solve how to do it in math eight if you didn't know how to use algebra. So here's my systems method. Again, here's math one. You should have solved it this way. I'm going to let x represent my um, trees. And I'm going to let um, b represent my shrubs. So these are my two equations because five trees and 15 shrubs, um, I'll write that then. Trees, shrubs, okay? The second equation that I'm given is that um, I know that the bush, if I add $15.25, it gives me the price of the tree because the tree is $15.25 more. Now that I have two equations, I'm going to use substitution because I've, they solve for x. So all of this, goes in for x. So I have 5 times b plus 15.25 plus 15d equals to 11.25. Next I need to distribute. So that gives me 5b plus, sorry, 5b plus 76.25 plus 15d plus 211 equals to 11. Equals 211.25. Okay, I need to get my like terms alike together, so that's going to make 20b plus 76.25 equals 211.25. Subtract 76.25, subtract 76.25. Okay, so 20b is equal to 135. I need to divide by 20, and B equals 675, and my answer is A. Okay, again, that is the algebra math one way to do it, okay? Here would be the math eight way. I'm going to use my answer choices and plug them in to see which one's true, okay? They're telling me, it says, my answer choices are how much does a what? A shrub cost. Okay, so these are my shrub options. This is where I'm going to write my tree. If a shrub costs that much, how much is a tree? Well, the way I figure that out is I know that a tree costs $15.25 more than a shrub. So if I add plus 15.25 to each one of these answer choices, this is what I'll get. This is going to get tree cost 22, a tree cost, ooh, that was that 23, and then 34.50 for the tree, and then 37.25, okay? So if these are my possible shrub choices, and I know that a shrub is $15.25 less than a tree, if I add all of my answer choices and I add 15.25 to it, that'll give me a tree cost. Now I need to know which one of these combinations makes this first statement true. Okay, so the first statement says that if you have five trees, I'm going to keep using X as my tree, okay, and you have 15 shrubs, um, and it has to equal a total of 11.25. I'm going to plug in my answer choices. I already know it's A, so let's use a different one. Let's use, let's use B as an example. So 5 times the shrub cost, cost which is, this is for answer choice B, 7.75 plus 15 times 23 equals to 11.25. Okay, well, if I multiply that out, okay, I'm going to get Oops, I switched the good knife. Right, this is the shrub cost. There we go. My bad. Okay. There we go. I switched places. Okay, so 
5 times the tree cost, which is 23, plus 15 times the bush price, which is 7.75. There we go. Okay. So I'm plugging in the prices from answer choice B into that very first sentence that they gave me, because that's an equation. You see that right here. Okay. And see if it works. Well, 5 times 23, since I have a calculator, that's going to give me 115. And 15 times 7.75 is... 1116.25. I need to see if that's equal to 211. Well, when I add these two together, I get 231.25. Well, that is not equal to 211.25. So that means that B is not my answer choice. And I would continue this process of plugging these answer choices into these X and B until I found one that made it true, which is obviously going to be A. Okay, and the last one for this video. Two stores sell cherries at different prices per pound. Store P sells for three and a half pounds of cherries for thirteen fifty, and the graph below shows the cost of different weights at store Q. Philip wants to purchase how many? Ten pounds of cherries. It says which statement is true. Well, the first thing I need to do is kind of organize my information. Store P, I can buy. For $13.30, I can buy three and a half pounds, okay? Well, I want to know how much it costs per pound. So I take the amount of money that I'm paying, and I divide that by how much I'm getting. And when you do that, you're going to get 3.8 over 1. So that means that one pound is going to cost $3.80. Well, now let me to find this out for store Q, that they've given me a graph. So I have to look where it goes through a corner which is right here. So they're telling me that the cost is four dollars and that gets me 1.25 pounds. Well I'm going to do that same process but find the unit rate. I'm going to take four, I'm going to divide it by 1.25 and I get 3.8 for one pound. Okay, so now I have their different prices. Except the question is if Philip buys ten pounds so I need to multiply both of these by 10, and that's going to tell me how much total money it costs. Ooh, I put the same thing. I'm sorry. This should have been 3 point. Sorry, this, this was right. 3.8, and this should have been 3.2. My bad. I'm sorry. There we go. Okay. So 4 divided by 1.25 is 3.2, and 13.3 divided by 3.5 is 3.8. So I'm going to multiply the unit rates by 10 because I want to get 10 pounds, and this is going to cost me $38. And this is going to cost me $32. Think which statement's true. Well, who's cheaper? Clearly, store Q is cheaper. Okay, I'd rather pay $32 for 10 pounds than $38. So when I look at my answer choices, it asks me the difference between them. So $38 minus $32 is $6. So the ones that say $8, I can go ahead and rule those out. And then between the last two, Philip will spend $6 more. Oops, more at store P because that's more expensive. So my answer is D. Okay. And that's the end of this video.